Right, guys, let's have a look at theorem 6a and its converse 6b. Now, the proofs of both of these are not examinable, and therefore we're just going to look at what they say and what reason we're going to use when we need this theorem. So let's look at 6a. It says an exterior angle of a cyclic quad. Now, what's an exterior angle? Well, in this example, ABCD is a cyclic quad. Now, the exterior angle in this case is angle D. What happens is, if you take one of the lines, one of the sides of a cyclic quad, and you produce it, as in you keep on extending it until E in this case, the angle that forms outside the cyclic quad is called the exterior angle. Now, this theorem says that the exterior angle is equal to the interior opposite angle. So, in this example, angle D1 equals angle B. So, it's the interior inside, but in the opposite corner. So, this theorem says if you have a cyclic quad, the exterior angle, angle D1, must equal angle B. And when we use this theorem, the reason we're going to use is exterior angle of cyclic quad. So let's have a look at an example. This example says to determine the size of the angles marked with the letters. Well, first of all, DEFG is a cyclic quad. And there is an exterior angle called X. Now, X will be equal to the interior opposite angle according to this theorem. So X equals 88 degrees. And my reason? Because it's the exterior angle of a cyclic quad. Now we have another exterior angle in this example, and that's 105. So 105 and y will be equal to one another. So y equals 105 degrees, exterior angle of cyclic quad. So it's pretty easy. Now let's have a look at the converse, which is theorem 6b. Theorem 6b says if you have an exterior angle of a random quadrilateral, notice there's no circle, so you're not told that this is cyclic, but if you're told that the exterior angle equals the interior opposite angle, so if you're given their equal, then you can assume or you can prove that this quad is cyclic. So if you can prove that angle B1 equals angle D, then ABCD must be a cyclic quad, which means there must be a circle, an imaginary circle, that can go through all these four points. Now this is the third way to prove a quad is cyclic. The first way was theorem 4b, to prove that you have angles in the same segment that are equal. So that was the butterfly angle shape that you were looking for. The second way was theorem 5b, which is if you could show that the opposite angles of a quadrilateral add to 180 degrees. And this is the third way to prove a quad is cyclic, if you can show that the exterior angle equals the interior opposite angle. Now, when we use this to prove that a quad is cyclic, the reason we're going to use is exterior angle equals interior opposite angle. Notice, again, you can't mention cyclic quad in the reason because you're trying to prove that this is a cyclic quad. So let's look at an example. In the sketch below, AX and YB are chords. Now what that means is that means that A and X and Y and B are all points on the circumference. So already we're given a cyclic quad. That quad is AX, BY, because all four points are on the circumference. Now apparently these chords are produced to D and C such that DC is parallel. Now that's always important because as soon as we have parallel lines we should start thinking corresponding, alternate and co-interior. Now we're trying to prove that DCYX is a cyclic quad. So as we just discussed, there's three possible ways to prove that it's cyclic. So we're trying to prove that that is cyclic. Now I don't see that butterfly angle shape here, which means theorem 4b is probably not the way to go. So I either need to prove that my opposite angles add to 180, or that I have an exterior angle equal to an interior opposite angle. Well, this has clearly got to do something with this parallel lines, otherwise they wouldn't have told me this. So I know that angle B equals angle C, because they're corresponding angles on parallel lines. But I know that there is the butterfly shape of my quadrilateral inside my circle, which means theorem 4 
will tell me that angle X1 and angle B1 are the same thing. But that means that angle X1 must equal angle C. And I'm going to argue that in a second, so in case you didn't follow, you'll see in a second's time. But now, if that's true, that's perfect for me, because angle X1 is the exterior angle of a cyclic, or of a quad. And if I can show that it's equal to C, then I have my exterior angle equals my interior opposite angle, which means I can conclude that this is cyclic. So let's start. The first thing we said was that angle B1 must equal angle C. And our reason was corresponding angles DC parallel to AB. And angle B1 equals angle X1. And that reason was from theorem 4, angles in the same segment. Now what happens here is I have two expressions for B1. On the one hand, B1 must equal angle C. And on the other hand, angle B1 is equal to angle X1, which means those two must also be equal. So I can say, therefore, angle X1 must equal angle C. Now there's no reason for that. That's just logical. They both equal angle B1, so they must be equal to each other. But as I said, that's perfect, because angle X1 is the exterior angle of the cyclic quad, and it is now proven equal to the interior opposite angle. So that means that DC YX is a cyclic quad. And my reason is because I've just shown my exterior angle equals my interior opposite angle.